Do you think women need to be a bit more transparent at the beginning of a relationship or should you wait um, when you begin a relationship? Should you be upfront with what you want? Uh, I, I would say so. And the reason I say so is because women think that let me just play it cool and eventually he'll change his mind and you want to get married and have kids. Mm -hmm. But what he's thinking is this girl's cool. She doesn't want a relationship. Let me keep my eyes open to somebody else. Yeah. And so what you're doing is you're training men to see you as a uh, option rather than a outcome. Mm -hmm. And whereas if you communicate your needs, absolutely, it will push away a lot of men, but it will push away the ones that had the wrong intentions anyway. Yeah. And so it doesn't mean you say, oh, I want to get married, I want to do this, that, and the other, but it's simple things like you having boundaries simply means when you don't like something, you simply communicate it. You don't punish the person for not listening to you, but you yeah. communicate it. Oh, we, we haven't spoken all day I, I I start to miss you can you just let me know you got home okay little things like that mm -hmm. whereas if you just say oh he hasn't called me in two days so I'm not gonna reply to him but then when he does I'm gonna be go and see him straight away yeah. he's going to learn and that's what you accept so it's about communicating your standards not necessarily your future outcomes but at least your standards and if you don't like something you let them know but you don't punish them for it mm -hmm. you don't get angry you let them know and if they don't want to abide by your boundaries no worries yeah it's a bit like when you go to a restaurant and you let them know your allergies you're not going to shout at them if they <laughs> you know if they don't have the food you like you're just going to go to someone else same thing with men you communicate your allergies what you don't like what you can't accept if they are okay with that perfect you know, you got a great match. If they're not okay, if you sit there, you're just going to be poisoned. So just go somewhere else. Go to another restaurant. Go to another. Go to another situation. But you have to let them know your boundaries. And what about women who get a taste of a toxic relationship mm -hmm. or a bad relationship mm -hmm. and they keep going back to it? Mm -hmm. That that would be a, a trauma bond. What happens with a toxic relationship is they give you love in doses. Mm -hmm. So they'll give you a bit of love, then followed by a lot of trauma, then love, then trauma. And what happens is we get addicted to that love. We, we see potential. We're like, oh, but it used to be so good. Or do you remember when he used to do that to me? How can I let him go? So they hold on to the good and forget the trauma in between and they end up staying with that person but the reality is if you have to think about when it was good it's not good yeah yeah because mm -hmm. a true healthy relationship there is no oh but I know what he used to be I know what we could be it is just we're cool we're calm it's not this spa like fireworks all day every day yeah. but there's that steady peace rather than I remember when we used to have it good or I remember when he was so kind there's no holding on to memories it's more what is going on day in, day out is more peaceful. And if a woman right now is listening and she's going through a divorce or a breakup, how can she get over it and what's your message to that woman? My message would be have a very clear vision of where you see yourself in a couple of years. And that might be married, kids, happy life. Now ask yourself, if you were to freeze time and freeze this partner, would he fit that vision? If the answer is yes, he'd be perfect, then fight for it. But if the answer is, oh no, that would be traumatic if we had kids in this environment, then you are holding on to an imaginary per uh, imagination. Yeah. Well, your true vision deserves somebody else and you to be somebody else because we can become very toxic in a toxic relationship. Yeah. So the best thing to do is remember your vision. And when you remember your vision, you start to realize, would this person fit that vision? And if the answer is no, simply be happy for them be happy for them be like you don't fit my vision you're not ideal for me but mm -hmm. i wish so you would meet someone who would fit yours but you don't fit mine and i wish you the best but i have to find mine because i deserve it and what about long distance relationships do they work um i think they are tricky in this day and age unfortunately yeah. it takes a tremendous amount of trust and it takes a tremendous amount of um, like stability created before you went long distance. Mm -hmm. So I think usually they work when there's an element of, oh, we can date other people, but when we get together, we're together. And um, I don't know how healthy that is, but I would say, though we've got so many channels of communication to keep relationships alive long distance, those same channels can be applied to other people in this day and age. Yeah. And that's what's difficult and people crave intimacy, whether it's emotional or physical, or intellectual, whatever it is, they crave intimacy. And when they can't access their partner, sometimes they can, you know, use those means in the wrong way. So it just depends, but I would say it's slightly difficult. 
and creating imaginary situations in our head. <laughs> well, women are amazing at that. If he hasn't replied, he's definitely uh, yeah. you know, with another woman. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's no alternative. He can never just be sleeping. It's always... And, it def and I would say if you're naturally insecure, which many of us are, there's nothing to be ashamed of, mm -hmm. um, don't torture yourself with a long-distance relationship because yeah. it can torture you. And what about social media mm -hmm. with relationships? Uh, has it complicated the way we look at relationships and how can we utilize it as a tool in a positive way? Um, it could be really positive when it's used in proportion, but I think what's happening, especially if you've got large following, I can speak on behalf of large following and small followings. Large followings, what it does is it creates an element of narcissism. Mm -hmm. What happens is you start to see human beings as disposable because there are so many alternatives available to you. Yes. You think, I just post a picture, somebody will message me. I just, I'm hungry, somebody will take me for dinner. You know, it takes nothing. Yes. Um, so large followings create an element of narcissism and it makes makes people start to see relationships as disposable. Small followings is less problematic, but then the reality is even with small followings, you'll see you know, partners liking pictures and it, and it causes a lot of trauma. Yeah. I know women who come to me and are thinking about surgery simply because their partner keeps liking pictures of girls with it. Yeah. So it causes a lot of trauma. I think, unfortunately, what social media does is it makes you think you've got so many options, but there are not actually that many options out there. And the reality is we're more connected to people we're similar to. Mm -hmm. But social media means that you can contact somebody in LA, you can contact somebody in Ghana, you can contact, and we might be similar on social media, but our norms and values will be very different. So I think it gives an illusion of options, but I don't know how healthy it is. But it is, but I have heard some great stories. I've heard so many people meet someone really great from social media. Yeah. I'm just, I'm always on the worst case scenario side because of what I do for, uh, for a living. But I do think if you use it in a healthy way mm -hmm. and you meet somebody who's social, I think using uh, uh, so people's social media behavior as a judge of character is actually a good way to look at it. If you meet somebody whose social media's behavior is bothering you mm -hmm. and he's not willing to compromise on that, at least you know this is a difficult partner. Yeah. But if you meet somebody whose social media behavior is so lovely, you're like, oh, maybe we could do something about this because he's actually behaving really well and I can see it, it's visceral, his behavior is great. So same thing, boys and girls, I think you can get an insight into what kind of person they are. So it can be used really well. And you mentioned the clients of yours who would